Welcome everyone. I'm Jean Sarah, co-founder and partner at B2. Overnight, our world moved to online video. Live events went virtual, employee meetings moved to Zoom, and news is broadcasting live from reporters' living rooms. As our clients reached out for help to prepare executives for this new channel, we realized our media and presentation training needed to evolve. Here to help us navigate this new environment is V2's media training specialist, Elise Samard. Welcome, Elise. Thanks, Jean. I'm glad to be here. This is an important topic. And really, it's just like you just said, overnight, video is now the primary channel of communication. And with that, we have challenges. Challenges from content. We need to be clear and concise when we're speaking. If you are in meetings or in interviews and there's three or more people, we want to make sure that you're not talking over each other. To our delivery, our facial expressions, our gestures, our posture, what should we be doing? How should we look? Now, in the beginning when this happened, when we went remote very, very quickly, as audience members, as viewers, we were very forgiving of a certain amount of roughness in these areas. But the time's come. Time, too much time has passed and we need to be able to do this right. So Elise, where should people start when they're thinking about how do they improve their presentation skills for video? You have to start with content, your message, and especially when you're doing a remote interview. So we're not having a conversation. We need to be clear, concise, and on point. When you're speaking, you need to be speaking with little to no verbal pauses. Those ahs and ums, those word fillers that detract and take away from your message. A great example of an executive being on message while being interviewed is the CEO of Qualcomm. And during this interview on Bloomberg, the CEO was asked, what does Qualcomm do? And as you're watching this interview and listening to his answer, he's right on message with little to no verbal pauses. You don't really hear an R or an um. No word fillers. Ourselves, the number one wireless innovator in the world. And what that really means is somebody has to go through and figure out how all these cell phone networks are going to work. You need to figure out how to align the entire industry so you can make a phone call. It is exactly what he wants to say. Now that's really important for the audience. As they're listening to his answers, if you're clear and concise and the content has a nice flow, the audience leans, leans in. I get glued to what you're saying. I really want to hear more and create a good understanding. How you say it matters a lot better than 55% of a message being delivered comes from our body language. So again, your eye contact, your facial expressions, your gestures, your posture, video can actually change the perception of your delivery. So for example, an awkward camera angle, or if I'm not focusing on the camera, I'm not really making eye contact with the viewer or with my audience, or if my camera's not at eye level. So we went to Room Raiders, and there's a great screenshot of a basketball player, John Wall. He's on MSNBC. And if you just look at that screenshot, you'll see that the camera angle is way below him. So he looks like he's looking down at his audience. For the viewer, you're looking up at him, and then you're also looking at his ceiling. It can be very, very distracting. So a quick fix to that would be to get eye level with your camera. So if you have a laptop and you don't, and you don't have a high enough desk or a high enough area, use books. If you have a desk that's automated and goes up and down, if that's an option, do that. Now it's interesting, there's another example of the CEO of Denny's and his name is John Miller. And he was being interviewed on Mad Money. And I love this interview because we just came out of talking about content. Now his content was completely on, he was on message, and he has a really great delivery overall. Facial expressions, a great pace, conversational. But watch when they go to that one shot of just him speaking. What is he doing with his eyes? You'll notice that most of the time he really doesn't focus on his camera. So the eye contact is non-existent. His eyes are moving back and forth, he's looking down. Now to the viewer, my perception of this is he's not making eye contact with me. He's not drawing me in. So a quick fix to this is know where your camera is and always have in mind, even though I'm alone in my office right now, there are people watching me. So I am trying to connect with somebody else. And if I don't look into the camera, they don't have that eye contact and that connection. Those are such compelling examples. 
So we've been talking about one-on-one -on -one settings for the most part. Um, we also have panel discussions. How do we navigate that environment on video? Um, we've all been party to those awkward and painful moments where everyone is talking over one another and there are awkward pauses to figure out who's going to speak. How do we approach things differently? Yeah, you know, this is the thing. Video requires a certain level of formality, right? So when you're leading a meeting, you really have to have fantastic facilitation skills. You have to be able to really become the MC of the meeting. So this means you have to set some rules, rules of engagement. So that means at the beginning of a meeting or a panel discussion, again, especially when you have three or more participants, that's when it can start to really get confusing. So usually I'll start off and I'll say, okay, everybody, put your audio on mute to make sure that we avoid the distractions of what can happen just in terms of audio. And then when we're conducting a meeting or a panel discussion or round table, if I want that person to speak and they don't take their, they don't put their audio back on, remind them, make sure you put your audio back on. Use people's names more often than you normally would so that they know when they should be speaking and that avoids confusion. When you are asking questions, make sure that those questions are very direct in terms of who you want to speak and actually what information you want from them. What you're going to do is you're going to minimize the risk of those confusing times when people are talking over each other. And as you said, it really becomes distracting. It becomes frustrating. And then you start to have that feeling of what they call Zoom exhaustion. And again, I think that we can all relate to that. Absolutely. You mentioned room raiders, and I have to say the voyeur in me has loved getting a glimpse into people's living rooms, offices, home environments. Um, how important is your backdrop and how, how should you think about preparing the space where you're going to record video? Yeah, so backdrops are critical nonverbal. So whatever your audience can see shapes the audience's perception of you and your message. We've actually let the world into our homes, which actually can be kind of fun as the viewer and the audience member, of course. But what do you want them to see and how does that add or detract from their perception of you and your message? So let's just take a couple of looks at you know, a really good example of a nice backdrop. And this is a CNBC political analyst, right? And if you can look at this person's backdrop, what do you see? Beautiful bookcases, well-lit room. I mean, it's, it's absolutely beautiful room. And the backdrop does exactly what it should do. It adds the perception that this person is a confident, incredible political analyst. It makes me want to what? Listen. Right? So that's what our backdrops are doing, and it is absolutely a nonverbal, right? If in all of the things that we've been talking about, the best place to actually see our content come together, our delivery come together, our backdrops, if you want to see some really good examples of, of the don'ts, take a look at the top health officials testifying before the Senate in mid-May on the coronavirus. And a couple that I want to pick out is the FDA commissioner. Now, very intelligent, has a lot of important things to say, but what happens is you get really distracted because his backdrop was probably one of those digital backdrops that his video platform uh, offered. And what happens is if you move anywhere to the left or to the right, you start to get blurred. And so then of course it really becomes distracting. And with this particular background, it, the lighting was really off, it was blurry, and it was almost too ethereal looking. These have been amazing examples and suggestions, Elise. I've worked with you a lot over the years on media training and presentation training. And I know from sitting in those workshops that there's so much more involved in preparing and practicing. How have you been refining your sessions to help clients who are thinking about training exclusively for online video? Yeah, I mean, this is, this is a difficult time. You know, we are faced with so many challenges right now, and I don't believe that communicating through video should be one of those challenges. So I've developed a course specifically to the challenges that we're facing to give you the skills, the tools, the techniques, so that you really are successful and you're confident while communicating through video. And as much as I would love for all of us to be in one room and do this training with you, you know, we're not there right now. 
So this training is going to be remote and remote training absolutely works. This is a course that would be a half day, four hour session. And we're gonna make sure that there's not more than 10 people in these groups to ensure that skill development. And this is my takeaway with all of this and this is why it's so important. You know, when you have a chance to do any type of media interview or public speaking, you are given an unbeatable opportunity to communicate with and influence the actions of an audience that's really important to you, that's really important to your organization. Now is your chance. Got to get prepared. Absolutely. Elise, this has been fantastic. Thank you so much for spending some time with us. For more information on media and video presentation training with Elise, you can visit our website, v2coms.com. Thank you.